We will extend our grazing land if we debush. It's very addictive. Once you get, get this machine coming to take that push, you say, move, go take out here too, and take out there too. So by the time you find out the money has gone, but at least the bush has also gone. So I think uh, it depends what priority one makes. Bush encroachment is affecting one third of Namibia's farmable land. Debushing is expensive and only viable if value can be added to the biomass. All over the country, people are starting to see potential and opportunities. The more you send it, after it is done, when it is polished, that's when now the grains come out now. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece of wood. I recommend Basopas. It's a good wood, you know, on our art. Yeah. The invader tree Prosopis is especially problematic for Namibia. It is not indigenous to the country and primarily found along riverbeds in the south. Its invasion is disastrous for the Namibian water resources. The wood, however, is sought for by furniture makers and carvers. Sustainable value chains to tackle bush encroachment require links between the type of bush available, appropriate harvesting techniques, fitting products, and ways to market them. A fascinating evolving market is the use of encroacher bush for agriculture. Beyond fertilizer, there is a considerable domestic demand for complementary and emergency animal feed, both in communal and commercial areas. As you know, the animals are already eating the bush as part of their natural diet. And what we've done is add things that the bush may need to enhance the animal's uh, digestive ability, and uh, it helps in their reproduction cycles, and really it helps all the way around. If you look to this side, you'll see how heavy the bush is encroached. And then this area directly behind me has been harvested three times. And what we're looking for is a bush that's maybe this high. He's easy to get to. He doesn't produce a lot of tannin like a big tree does. Uh, and it's not big and woody. We're looking for the smallest stuff that's like this, maybe up to half as big as my wrist. And uh, because it doesn't have as much woody uh, product in it and, and the bark and everything has got a lot of nutrition. So we bring in teams and, and they cut it by hand, although that does provide a lot of employment for the country. Sometimes it's slow and right now I have a, a crew that are, are doing the best we've ever done. And so uh, I need about 40 more of them. Harvesting creates substantial opportunities for employment generation in rural areas. Semi-mechanized and labor-based bush control methods allow careful selection of the species removed, making these methods more environmentally friendly. At this point in time, we are a bit confused on how to do it. So we are looking for ways on how best to deal with this problem. You cannot just chop off all the trees. It is needed for other purposes. We remove the problem trees or we thin, we open up. Then they turn this into woods where they make fire with. An estimated 2,000 tons of firewood, mainly from trees, are used daily in Namibian households. This high demand can be met through the use of invader and encroacher species, thereby reducing illegal logging. The charcoal industry is Namibia's oldest wood value chain and currently the most important use of wood from debushing. Namibia exports between 60,000 and 158,000 tons of charcoal annually and is the sixth largest exporter in the world. Internationally, the demand for charcoal far exceeds supply. My father started Jumbo in 1989 and we currently employ about 250 people. I think about 60% of those are women. We've always tried to keep uh, Jumbo as labor intensive as possible. We've got the two main markets, the FSC market and the non-FSC market. FSC, it's a barbecue industry. The instant lighting charcoal is our, is our main product. Sainsbury's, the, the big retailers, are our, are our main customers. And the non-FSC market is our restaurant charcoal, the, the Mediterranean, some of the Arab countries. Namibia has the potential to produce high-quality charcoal. 
certificates such as FSC and Fairtrade convey a distinct marketing advantage and bring benefits to workers and the environment. Every bag of charcoal that we sold as Fairtrade, we received money into, a, into an account here at Jamba. There was a fair trade committee elected from our workers and they decide how that money is spent. The first project they, they decided to do was they, they all bought bicycles. The rapidly growing international biomass market has a high demand for pellets, a great opportunity for Namibia. Bushwood is typically smaller than tree wood, but this disadvantage can be overcome by pressing bush chips into briquettes. Such briquettes are already being produced in Namibia. The bush plan was a pilot project to show you can do things other than just make charcoal. Our hope always was that somebody would take this idea and expand on it, shall we say, to do bigger volume products like wood pellets, which are the common type of wood fuel in the global trade, or what we would really like to see is somebody get into biomass power in a big way in the country. There are different things you need, and you must pick what is important for you. But we all should do something to fight this bush. Either you want charcoal, then you must do it. You want land to extend, you must do it. You want more grass, you must do it. But we can't just sit and fold hands and the bush come and eat all our land. That should not be allowed. Yeah. Um, 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 um.